Good morning everyone and welcome to the manse of Port Glasgow New Parish Church. We joined together this morning on Sunday the 30th of August, um, nearly September, Sunday the 30th of August at 11am and I welcome you wherever you may be joining us from today. I also welcome you if you're a visitor with us today. Um, if you can, leave a comment in the comments section on either Facebook and YouTube and we will say hello back to you and hopefully get to know you just a wee bit better. A few intimations um, this morning, which of course is good, you know, despite the fact that the church is closed down the road, the church still continues, there's still lots happening. One of them you might not be aware of, uh, I spoke to a few of you in the town and you weren't aware of it, is that on Tuesday night, it was historic because it was the final meeting of the Presbytery of Greenock and Paisley. As part of the Church of Scotland's Radical Action Plan, Presbyteries are merging together and we're merging together with the Presbytery of Dumbarton. So Greenock and Paisley and Dumbarton have come together to form the Presbytery of Clyde. So from Tuesday night next week, um, it will be live streamed on Renfrew North's website, we become the Presbytery of Clyde. Um, so I know there'll be mixed emotions about that, some will be happy, some will be sad, some will be a bit apprehensive, but I'm certainly looking forward to working with my colleagues um, in this new Presbytery, the Presbytery of Clyde. Our new moderator for the Presbytery will be the Reverend Ian Johnston, who some of you may remember was the minister down at the Lyle Kirk when it all sort of, when all those churches became the Lyle Kirk. Um, and it was just before the Reverend Owen Derrick. So that will be our new moderator. We said a big thank you on Tuesday night to our current moderator, who is Mr Jack McHugh, who you should all know um, from his time here in Port Glasgow. Uh, Jack's done a fantastic job and as a new minister who just came into the Presbytery uh, a few months ago, he's been amazing with myself, phoning me, emailing me, seeing how things are going, offering his help and advice, so I want to say a big thank you to him. It's been very much appreciated, especially as this beginning of my ministry has been not what it's expected, it's been different of course. So, but yes, Presbytery Clyde, this Tuesday, we be begin our journey with a new Presbytery. I want to say a few thank yous because on Monday, a big crowd of you came out on Monday to help with the church gardens. Of course, we were socially distant, we watched what we were doing there, but um, we cleared out all the sides of both um, sides of the main stairs as you walk into the church. Um, so, massive thank you to everybody that came out to help with that. Um, it was a real team effort, it was great to see everybody as well face to face. Um, and then of course on Thursday, what we did was we all met down at B&Q to get a full pallet. We were given a full pallet of wood chip um, from B&Q and we needed to get it from A to B. So big thank you to all of you who showed up on Thursday with your cars. Um, we didn't need all the cars but thanks for showing up anyway because um, we might have done. Um, and it just shows that you, you really cared, you wanted to help. Um, we didn't need your car but you know we, we got there in the end because what happened was Ali and Brian brought along uh, a police van, um, so it was hilarious. Uh, at first, you know what they're like, you know what some of our congregation like, so it looked like we were in bother, so it looked like some of them were getting in the back of the van, but actual fact, what we were trying to do was we were trying to squash as much wood chip into this police van as we possibly could. It was actually hilarious to watch. Um, so we we filled a police van with wood chip and we filled a few cars as well, so apologies if we didn't use your car and you come all the way down for that, but. Um, I really do um, appreciate it. So the next thing is, of course, we're going to work on those both sides. We've got the wood chip and um, the stuff we're going to be dealing with. But Part Lee um, have said that they will look at both sides for us and they will add plants and various things to make it really eye-catching. And um, Ali and Brian, who are our local police officers, said they would pay for it. So any costs, the Greenock Police Office, they've got a fund and they said they'd pay for it for us. Um, so anything that Part Lee does, um, it will be covered by Greenock Police Office, so, do you know, that's just amazing, it really, really is. It, the amount of stuff that's been given to us as a church, you know, the wall, all this stuff we needed for the wall, the paint for the railings um, and for the fire exit door, um, the wood chip from B&Q, we seriously really do appreciate um, all your help. Tesco have also given us four brackets um, for hanging baskets and they've also given us a whole load of flowers um, we know where, where we want to put those, um, we're thinking around the side, um, kind of the caged area where the kind of parking space is and the minister's parking space is. Um, but you know, that's just amazing, you know, so much I had to say there, but it's just, it's been amazing and it's good to see that 
community connection, the community and us and you know coming together and it's so positive, it's a positive news story about Port Glasgow um, and about Inverclyde coming together um, because you know what, this is an amazing town to live in, I love living here, I mean I've only lived here since March, of course I grew up in Greenock but um, I do love living here and I love meeting all you guys and talking to you guys and there is great things happening in this town and sometimes I think we hear a lot of negativity coming out about you know Port Glasgow and about Inverclyde but do you know what, I do like living here, um, th there's lots of great stuff happens here and the people are just amazing, you ask for help and look at you look at what's happened and um, so that's, I just wanted to say all that because it's it really is a positive s news story and it's about our community coming together and we've also set up a Neighbourhood Watch scheme so um, if you go onto Neighbourhood Watch Scotland website um, we've set up a Neighbourhood Watch scheme and it's called Port Glasgow Central and it's basically just about all of us working together as businesses, as homes in the centre of the town and as a church as well um, just keeping an eye on the church more eyes keeping an eye on the businesses and the houses around the area but again another example of us all coming together um, as a community so um, you might see some of the Neighbourhood Watch stickers around about the town uh, that was my job on Friday uh, I went around and stuck some of them up and I'm looking for businesses who maybe want to take um, stickers for their windows in the town if you can take one of them um, let me know uh, or if you can take a sticker, um, I know one of you, I'd, I'd met one of you during the week and you've put them up into the three um, high flats in Port Glasgow, that's amazing as well. If you can think of anywhere where they can go in the centre of town, then please do let me know. Uh, the next one is new members, so our new members met during the week there, we meet again uh, this coming week, we're going to meet on Friday this week at uh, 5 o'clock. We now have 12 new members, we've got another one added, so um, we went from 11 to 12 new members, which is of course brilliant. Next two intimations and this is my final I promise um, but we've been talking a lot about mission and how we can support our community and get out there and see how we can offer help so the first one here is you might have seen Robert was in the newspaper this week um, and they were promoting the we're needing volunteers um, if I just get that up here so they're looking for volunteers for Inverclyde League of Hospital Friends um, and they run a vital patient transport service to help people to get to clinics and appointments as far away as Edinburgh and they have a serious shortage of volunteer drivers so if you can at all help with that, if you can offer your time then there is a number and we've put it on the Facebook page, you might see it further down or please just private message the church Facebook page or you can contact Robert um, but yeah the League of Friends transport service is looking for um, volunteers and that's kind of urgent so if you can help please do let them know and the last one, this is the last one I promise, um, Inverclyde Faith and Through Care it's called so if you google Inverclyde Faith and Through Care um, one of the uh, trustees is a Reverend Karen Harbison and she phoned me and they're looking for volunteers or trustees or both um, to help with that and basically it has a support worker, his name is Robbie and it's for people who come out of prison um, and it's you know you volunteer to sort of support them and help them um, it's people that want to turn their lives around um, they want to change and um, they don't want to go back to the old way um, it's not a referral scheme they, they refer them well they refer themselves so they really want to change and um, they meet at the Lyle Gateway and um, that's one of their meeting points and um, apparently there's somewhere in Port Glasgow that they meet as well um, and if you become a trustee there's a committee meeting it's one every six weeks and it's linked to Faith and Community Scotland so yeah they're looking for volunteers and they're also looking for trustees um, I'm going to stick a video on at the end of this service because it explains a wee bit more about what it is they do um, but as Carlin said there actually isn't any volunteers um, from Port Glasgow so they have service users from um, all over Inverclyde and they have service users who live in Port Glasgow but they don't actually have any volunteers from Port Glasgow so this could be something, we've been talking a lot about mission and how we as a church um, can support so this is a Christian charity Inverclyde Faith and Through Care so could you volunteer your time, um, could you be a trustee for example um, helping to support someone that's come out of prison and try and help them to turn their life around then that might be something that you're interested in and um, there's a video at the end of this service and contact myself and I can get you in contact with Karen who will happily explain um, everything to you so yeah a lot of intimations there again I do apologise but it's it's important because there was a lot of important stuff in there and a lot of positive stuff as well so anyway 
Um, let's begin our service. Um, so we begin with our call to worship. So let us worship God together, offering our praise, honour and glory. May our eyes be open to see God's glory. May our ears be open to hear God's wisdom. May our hands be open to offer God our gifts. And may our mouths be opened to sing God's praise. And may our hearts be opened to offer God our love. Let us worship God. We sing, if you want to, or listen along to our first hymn, All People That On Earth Do Dwell.
Good morning boys and girls, I hope that you are all doing well, thanks for joining us today and I hope you've had a good week and I hope you're still enjoying school. Um, and if you remember we always start our time together don't we with either a high five or a virtual fist bump and I think if memory serves me right we did the high five last week so why don't we do the fist bump, adults you can take part as well, you know, why not? So we hold out our, our arm and after three we do this together. Okay, so are we ready? You might be watching on a laptop or a phone or whatever it may be. Here we go, right? One, two, three. There you go, virtual fist bump. So I'm so glad that you've come to join us today. Now, if you remember a few weeks ago, um, I had asked you if you would create a welcome banner for the church gates and it looked fantastic, if you remember. Nice and colourful. It was up in the gates for a few weeks Lots of people looked at it, lots of people were asking about it and we put it online as well and people were all liking it and commenting on it and everything so it was great. Um, but unfortunately after a few weeks, um, I don't know if you've noticed but it rains a lot in Port Glasgow, I know. Um, so it started to become really soggy. Now to be fair I really should contact the manufacturer who made the laminating pouches because on the front page it says waterproof. No. So um, they became quite soggy unfortunately. But I found a new area which is just above the link corridor door, um, it's like a kind of rectangle section um, and I was hoping that you could do it for me again but this time we'll put it inside and it'll be nice and dry and it'll last much much longer. So if you can do it for me again that would be great, I appreciate you're busy with schoolwork and everything else so um, you know don't worry put pressure on you, you know, there's no rush um, but it would be good. Um, so if you maybe get your mum or your dad or whoever you're with to let me know and I can maybe send you a letter or you might have the letter from before um, and you want to do it again for us and that would be fantastic. So we're going to put it up and it'll be inside and it'll last much longer uh, than the last one. Okay? Excellent. Question for you this morning. Have you ever had one of those days um, where everything seems to not go, not go right? Okay, maybe the adults are the same, you've just one of those days, just a really, really bad day. So for example, it could be that you wake up late, maybe your alarm didn't go off and then you discover that there's no milk for your cereal and you miss the school bus and at school you keep misunderstanding things, you think, oh, what is that, you know, what, what's the teacher saying? And the teacher maybe thinks that you're doing it on purpose and you get into trouble for it. And then your, friend, your friends for some reason are just so mean to you, but for no good reason. And then it gets to lunchtime and you're really hungry and you open your bag and you realise, oh, I forgot to bring my lunch. And then you go home to find that your favourite toy, your absolute favourite toy, has been chewed up by your pet dog or your cat. Now maybe you've not exactly had something like that happen to you, but maybe you've had some of that. Um, I know certainly, you know, I've had days where the alarm didn't go off or maybe I just ignored it and I got up and I was so tired that I put cereal into the cornflakes and then I tried to put the milk in the cupboard and tried to squeeze the box of cereal back in the, the fridge. I was just so tired. Um, but we've maybe all had days like that, we've just had a really bad day and it's those kind of days that you know sometimes we can feel really sad and we can feel really lonely on those days. And in today's Bible reading, Jesus is speaking to those of us who are having those kind of days, kind of really bad days. And he's also talking to those who feel like they've, you know, they've just had that their whole entire life. They're maybe just a, a really bad patch. Something's went on and they just feel like everything's really bad, feel really sad, I feel really lonely. And what he's telling them is that God is with you. So if you've had a really bad day or a really bad week or something's happened and you just feel, you know, for example, like, you know, everyone's against me or everyone's mad at me today or I feel really lonely or I feel really down this week, I feel really sad this week. And what he's saying is to remember that God is with you. And I know sometimes it maybe doesn't feel like it, you maybe think, well, where is God in all of this? But what we're trying as Christians and our faith tells us that God is always with us. God is with us through the good things and when times don't feel so good. So I want you to remember that if you take anything away from this morning, just remember what Jesus is telling us today. That no matter what, no matter what goes on in our life, whether it is good or bad, the days we feel happy and the days where we feel sad, that God is always with us. 
And it's really important that we have a look at our Bibles and we read through our Bibles and we realise just how much that is true. Okay, so remember that God, boys and girls, is always with you. We're going to sing and we're going to, there's actions to this song as well. It's fishy music and build up, if you remember. Build up. Remember this one? One another. Build up. Your sisters and brother. Build up. Okay, so let us sing and listen along to our next song, which is Build Up by Fishy Music. And now we come to our scripture reading this morning. Remember, if you'd like to read out uh, one of our scripture uh, readings uh, each week, then please do let me know. Um, all it's required of you to do is to video yourself reading one of our Bible readings and to send me the video so that I can um, add it to our church service. Our scripture reading today comes from Luke chapter 6, reading from verses 17 to 26. Luke chapter 6, reading from verses 17 to 26. And it's entitled, Blessings and Woes. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples um, was there and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured and the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. 
Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you, and reject your name as evil, because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven. For that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. Amen and thanks be to God for the reading of his holy word. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Saviour and our Redeemer. Amen. Jesus' words in today's story may be familiar to us, but what impact did they have on the first people who heard them? Well, for the poor person, there was no government support and little education or training. Since wealth was seen as a blessing from God, many people at the time may have believed that their poverty was their own fault. To the poor, Jesus promised an entire kingdom, and not just any kingdom, but God's kingdom. For the hungry person, they were of course starving. They never had enough to eat, and what little they did get, they could never choose. They had to steal leftovers and rotten food from the marketplace, or they were dependent on the charity of others. Their empty bellies ached from lack of food, and their bodies were weakened by poor nutrition. Jesus promised them that they would be full. Now they couldn't remember what that felt like, but the thought of it kept them awake at night. Then there was those that were mourning. Now in, in the time of Jesus, if someone in your family died, you had to follow a strict set of rules for mourning. In the week following the death, you were not allowed to work change your clothes or even bathe. In the following month, you were not allowed to socialise or go out to any kind of celebration. If you'd lost a parent, these restrictions continued for a whole year. Mourning affect your entire life. There must have been people who lost several relatives and entered into years of mourning, which in effect isolated them from society. Imagine how they must have felt when Jesus offered them joyful laughter. All these people to whom Jesus spoke were in some way pushed out by society. The poor and the hungry were seen as an inconvenience or objects of pity and charity. The mourners were socially excluded. Most of all, there were those who were sick. Those who were sur surrounded Jesus in large numbers. They were treated as unclean and untouchable. Among the rich people were the hated tax collectors, who extorted unfair taxes and prospered at the expense of the poor. Famously well fed were the Romans, the occupying power, notorious for their lavished feasts. And when Jesus mentioned those who laughed, people may have thought of local kings like Herod, who were cruel. Jesus promised the downfall of all these people, which must have been music to the crowd's ears. Finally, when Jesus promised these blessings and woes, he was making a big announcement. All Jews were familiar with God's promise of a saviour. They knew the words of the prophet Isaiah, which read this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Now shortly before today's story, Jesus had read those very words in the synagogue and declared that he was the fulfilment 
of this promise. He was the Messiah, the Lord's anointed. When he healed the sick and brought the news to the poor and the hungry people, he was publicly demonstrating that he was their saviour. No wonder they all wanted to follow him. Now to end, I want to share with you a video clip. So if it was possible to see a video of Jesus at work in Galilee, it might look something like the following clip. This inspirational man embodies the spirit of Christ in his care for the poor. And he shows us the kind of difference that Jesus made to the lives of ordinary people. Let's have a look at this short video clip. I finished my college here. I was working for Taj Group of Hotels Bangalore. I saw a very old man. He was heating his own human waste for hunger. I thought, what is the purpose of my life? What am I going to do? In a star hotel, I feed all my guests. But where in my hometown, there are people who are living even without food. I, I quit my job and I started feeding all these people from 2002. Today morning we made uh, ven pongal and sambar. Ven pongal is a blend of uh, rice and dal with a lot of uh, spices. Ven pongal and uh, sambar was being made for the breakfast. And for the lunch, we made uh, tomato rice and sabji. We fed the homeless, mentally ill destitutes, and the old people who have been left uncared of the society. People are suffering for food. They don't have food to eat. If you don't give them food to eat, they will die out of human hunger. I cut their hair. I give them a shave, I give them bath. For them to feel psychologically that they are also human beings, there are people to care for them, yeah, they have a hand to hold, hope to live. Food is one part, love is another part. So the food will give them physical nutrition, the love and affection which you show will give them mental nutrition. Being a Brahmin community and an Orthodox family, there are a lot of objections. Brahmins are not supposed to touch these people, clean these people, hug these people, feed these people. Everybody has got 5.5 liters of blood. I am just a human being. For me, everybody are same. There are, there are thousands and thousands and lakhs and lakhs of people suffering. What is the ultimate purpose of life is to give. Start giving. See the joy of giving.
And now we come to our prayers for ourselves and for others. And within this prayer today, there will be a moment of silence. That moment of silence is there for your own personal prayer. So perhaps it's something that's going on in your own life or in the lives of someone you know and love. Maybe there's something you've seen in the news this week, whether it be locally or nationally, and you want to take a moment to pray. Or perhaps you just had a really, really tough week this week. Um, perhaps there's just been so much going on, so fast paced, um, so much noise that you just want to take a moment to stop, to be quiet, to reflect and to pray. And of course to hear that still small voice, to hear God speak to you in this moment of silence. Whatever it may be, let us take a moment to pray. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we pray for those who are hungry in a world of plenty. For those who do not know where their next meal is coming from. Lord, please help us to provide for them. Lord, we pray for those who have the power to change the world. For leaders of nations whose decisions can mean the difference between death and life for many. And for those with the power but not the will to cancel the debts of the poor. Please help them to hear the cries of the poor. Lord, we pray for those who work for agencies of relief, that they may have wisdom and courage in the decisions that they must make. We pray for those who cry for justice for the poor, for those who speak out, for those whose voices are not heard, and for those who work unselfishly, for those who cannot work for themselves. Please give them strength in their endeavours. Lord, we pray for the church, your people throughout the world. We ask for the courage to speak for those deprived of a voice, the willingness to share the pain of those whose hands are empty, and the power to stand up for the powerless, the lost, and those with no hope, and to go on standing, no matter the cost. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. Lord, in a moment of silence, we bring to you our own personal prayers for those this week who are on our hearts and on our minds. Lord, hear all of our prayers, for we ask them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. We now bring our service to a close this morning, and I want to thank you all very much um, for tuning in this morning. It's very much um, appreciated. We close our service with a, an old favourite. Um, it is, Will Your Anchor Hold?
And now, go out into the world to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to those who need it most. Go now in peace to love and to serve the Lord. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you and those whom you love, this day and forevermore. having served a short term prison sentence who are coming back to the Inverclyde postcode. This is Robbie Miller. Say hello Robbie. Hi folks, how's it <laughs> And Robbie took over um, that, the position that I had as the coordinator um, and he is the he's the new um, IFIT coordinator and he has been in post since February, February the February yeah, this year. So Robbie's going to talk a wee bit about um, about the work that he's been doing through the, this uh, COVID-19 crisis and some of the support he's been doing with the guys uh, and he'll tie some of his own his own personal experiences into that and I'm just going to talk for a wee minute about how the how the organisation came to do the work that we do in Inverclyde. So um, in my, uh, Faith and Through Care were set up in 2013 um, in Inverclyde and before that they had a project in North Glasgow and it was recognised that um, that this area needed something, a project that could help folks who, who were returning um, from prison. So we set up, I was the, the local coordinator here and um, we we got support locally from, from different places but we, we basically had a team of local people who um, we work we with volunteers and they support the guys as well coming back. So we train the volunteers and we support them. Uh, we visit the boys while they're still in prison and um, and we kind of start the work there but we can take referrals from anywhere so we um, provide when someone's you know serving a short term sentence or they're at risk of serving a sentence then we can we can sort of support them so we we were part of a bigger organisation called Faith and Community Scotland which um, worked all over Scotland but um, it was, it was recognised that we'd be better have been a local charity you know, with local um, board members and local volunteers supporting local people. So we set up uh, Inverclyde Faith and Through Care. Before that, it was called Faith and Through Care. So the new charity became Inverclyde Faith and Through Care. And, and it just continued the work that Faith and Through Care had been doing. And we were delighted when Robbie um, came on board. And as I say for myself, I was, I was getting to, uh, moving on to something new. So. We were absolutely delighted when Robbie came on board and um, yeah, and, it, and I'm sure it was challenging for Robbie because of this whole um, coronavirus crisis, it, you know, started just after he was in post but he's done, he's done amazing to keep the work going and, um, and develop the work brilliantly. So I'll just pass on to Robbie and he can talk a wee bit sure. about this. Thank you. Thanks very much, Chris. And hi, folks. My name is Robbie Miller. I'm the, I'm the volunteer coordinator for IFIT. And yeah, it's, it's, it has been a challenging time since I started, but it's been really, really, really good as well. And I suppose I'll give you a bit of background from my, my last post. And I worked in homelessness for eight years 
And when this position came up, and I'm from Inverclyde, I've, I've lived here for eight years as well, but when this post came up, I just really saw it. something that was close to my heart. I've got, I've got experience in the prison system, uh, as well as homelessness and addiction as well, so it just really made sense to me. I felt this was a job that I could really take on and try and, and, try and do something positive and try and influence uh, positive change in our community. So yes, it, so I took over in February and uh, we, we, we support volunteers that support participants returning to the, return to the community from an underclade. Uh, and we, we do take referrals from the, the Health and Social Care Partnership as well as other org organisations the Link Centre and the Community Addictions team in the prison. So I, su I suppose that the coronavirus pandemic kind of came on us really, really unexpectedly and things changed really quickly. We've had to adapt our work to support the participants in the community throughout this time and we, 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 we sought funding which allowed us to, to make sure that everybody was, you know, the, the signed up participants were, were receiving food and, and we made sure they were connected on mobile phones and they had internet access to access online recovery support networks yeah, and, and stay in contact with us and the volunteers. So it's, uh, what I've found throughout this time, it's, it's, it's been, it's funny how it takes like, a really uh, challenging time for people to, to feel wanted and I found that some of the participants that hadn't engaged for a long, long time had we've we've managed to connect with them again and over the time what we've done is we've built up trust and, and the aim is to get them back involved once we're able to return to the community as as, as normal. Uh, so yeah it, it's been really good. We, we've increased the referrals and stuff and there's been a lot of work I've been trying to do in the background so that when we do we, we do start back we can we can get can get the support in place as soon as possible. So again, more experience coming out of prison, the challenges you face are, my, my experiences with, with addiction, I kind of, I burnt all the bridges I had, and, and when I come out of prison, the first thing, I, I, I just, any resilience I built in prison, suddenly just uh, gave, gave away, I, I just returned to addiction very, very quickly. So I suppose the aim is to try and get guys connected straight away, link them in with the services that's already available, and, and get them the support they need. Uh, quick and, and walk with them for a wee while till, till they can start walking on their own. Uh, so yeah, I, 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 again, if, if there's anything that I can help with or any, any further information is needed, I'm, I'm available. Just pop in or, or you can you can get me on Robbie at ifit.scot and, and I'll answer any any questions I can. So thanks for that. Cheers. As Robbie says, the, um, we're very blessed in Inverclyde to have such a, um, such a good you know, range of services and range of um, supports for people, but often we don't know how to access them, or you know, we struggle to access them because we're, you know, you know, get getting along to places can be difficult for all of us, um, but especially if you've been isolated and you know you feel a wee bit on your own. But I do amazing work at linking people, um, you know, with these services, and you know, and the your voice do the same, you know, with the recovery cafe and all the stuff that we have here. We've got a great team of loads of people who, who really care for people uh, and they have a real heart for wanting to see people you know make positive change in their life and yeah I would just encourage anybody who you know who might be at a bit of a crossroads or a bit of a you know a bit of a place in their life where you know they do want change but I'm not sure how to go about it then please you know get in contact with the folks at IFA or the folks at, um, at Your Voice. Your Voice do some amazing work um, and they have, you know, connections all over, as I say, there's a lot of good work goes on in Inverclyde, so yeah, I would just encourage folks to get along to that.